Hey everyone, Reflected here. And today, I'd like to show you my brand new joystick uh, Winwing F16EX. I got it a week ago and I've been using it ever since. And I think I'm ready to give you a short review with all of its pros and cons. I'd like to state it very clearly that it's not a paid sponsorship, a paid ad or review. Winwing did not send me uh, this stick. I bought it from the Winwing web store. I wish they had and in case they're watching this and they want to send me, uh, I don't know, an F18 throttle to review, I'll do it. Anyhow, this is probably the best stick I've ever had and I'd like to let you know why. A bit of a background. Uh, I travel a lot so I don't have a fixed station where where I can have fixed mounts and all the cool stuff I uh, I use a laptop and I have to be able to set it up wherever I am so that's why I've been using a cheap Thrustmaster T16000 uh, which is probably the best bang for the buck hands down bar none the best cheap joystick on the market it doesn't feel cheap, it's precise, accurate, comfortable, it has plenty of buttons, uh, super reliable, I absolutely loved it. I only had two problems with it, the stick and the base, which was rather wide, was fixed together, so it was really hard to transport it in my backpack and to travel with it. And the other problem was that on top of the stick, I didn't have a whole lot of buttons and hat switches. Actually, uh, the trigger button and three more buttons and one hat switch, which is okay for a warbird. Borderline, you can get away with it flying a Tomcat, but if you wanna fly the Hornet or the F-16, which I'm flying more and more these days, it's just not possible. I mean, you have to reach down and use keyboard assignments to replace all the hat switches. So I thought it was time for an upgrade. I asked around in the community and decided to go for the Winwing. And especially for the F16 EX stick, because not only does it have a whole lot of uh, buttons and head switches, but it even has some extra ones I will show you. And I got the Orion base with it. Um, which is ideal for desktop mounts, but not ideal for hard mounts, but that perfectly suits me. So let's go through all the pros and cons, honestly. Let's be positive, let's start with the pros. So here it is, the stick. Oh, by the way, those cuts on my wrist, that has nothing to do with the DCS AI and my desperation when I try to make them do stuff. It's a surfing accident. I had a bad wipeout and the wave uh, wiped the reef with me and kind of cut, cut my wrist. Weird, but I'm okay. So uh, first time I got it, I unboxed it. And the first thing that hit me was how amazing the quality is. I mean, I've watched several reviews and they all said that this feels solid and, 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 and metallic and all that, but I just didn't expect it to be so good. The stick is heavy and it feels like it's made of metal, probably it is. The buttons feel tight and durable, not sloppy at all, not plasticky, just amazing. The assembly was super easy. I'm not a very techy guy, but I just had to plug it in, screw it, and there you go. Fix it with another screw in the front, and that's it. So the quality is definitely a plus. The other plus is the size. I don't have my uh, Thrustmaster joystick here, but it was about this tall. So remember my Spitfire training, when you want to apply very smooth, very small inputs, the smaller the stick, 
the smaller the input you need to apply for the same amount of deflection. So it's, it's harder. Uh, but this one, the arm that moves is much, much, much longer. So you can fly a lot smoother. I actually flown the Spitfire uh, with this and I, I realized that I need a lot less curve to fly as smooth as I did with uh, the Thrustmaster. And that's without any extensions and stuff. It's already way bigger, way longer. That's pretty cool. I really like um, this leather thingy. It looks like a, a gear shifting stick in a car because let's be honest, there's a lot of dirt and hair and whatnot that falls into the gap uh, with regular joysticks and then just clogs the system, whatever. Uh, but this protects everything. Um, some people listed it as a con. It's kind of weird. It has these sticky thingies uh, fixing it to the table. Uh, some people say uh, that it's not ideal and it moves and not stable, but hey, it's pretty stable. I mean, if I yank the stick fully back hard and fully forward, I can feel a certain amount of movement. But then again, if you fly an aircraft, you rarely yank the stick fully back, fully forward uh, with such force. You want to fly smoothly. So I expected this to be a big con, but I was, uh, I was surprised. I was positively surprised. It's not as bad as you would think. Now let's have a look at this, the adjustable handrest. I have a rather small hand, so I had to raise it a little bit so that I can rest my wrist comfortably and reach all the buttons. But it's super easy. And the big, big, big advantage, look at all these buttons. If you can't get away with all these, then, then I don't know. I don't think you can get away with anything then. So let's start from the bottom. This is an axis. I know lots of sticks have something like this, but it just presses a button. But this one, you can use it as an axis. And when you reach all the way, then it's a button. So you can use it both ways. It's really awesome for the brake axis of the MiG-21 or the Spitfire or the Mosquito. Makes it really easy. And there's this button, autopilot, disengage or uh, nose wheel steering, use it for whatever you like, a pinky button. I love this, it's a five-way hat. And finally, I can use it as uh, the DLC for the Tomcat. Of course, it's not a spring-loaded wheel, but still, it's at the right spot, you know? It feels right. So these are the buttons. This part is your regular F16 slash A10 uh, stick. You have a weapon release button, five-way hat, another five-way hat, another five-way hat. On top of these, you have an extra mount over here with another five-way hat, which is slightly tilted. So it fits your, uh, your finger better. And this one can be pressed, but it's also an axis, like a slew axis, like a mini joystick on your Xbox controller. I've heard that this can be used as a five-way hat as well. I'm just not sure how, but I'll get back on that later. And if you want, if you want an authentic uh, F-16 stick, you can very easily unscrew and dismount this part. But why would you do that? Uh, it's pretty amazing. I use these for the, the real functions and I use these for the DCS game functions, such as zoom in, zoom out, zoom normal, you know what I mean? So I, I don't have to sacrifice any of these. Let's turn it around a little bit. You have another five-way hat here. 
you have the trigger. It's two stage, first stage, second stage. It feels pretty solid, a lot of resistance. It's not like pressing a plasticky little trigger. And then you have this. I'm not sure what it is, but you can use it for a lot of things. This position is one button, this is another button. So it's like a two-way switch, one, two, one, two. And also, from here on, it can be used as an axis and another button. That's so amazing. So it's just another axis. I think I will use this one for the brake lever, of the Spitfire, because it, in the Spitfire you pull it like this like near the top. I think this would be closer to reality, but then again, you can use this one as well. It's just amazing. So many switches, so many functions. The possibilities are endless. Another pro is uh, the setup. I mean, it took me 30 seconds to put it together. I plugged it in. It's self-installed and worked out of the box. Just awesome, super easy. Now let's have a look at the cons, because there are some, and I wanna be honest with you. So if you're thinking about buying this stick, you should see the other side of the coin. First one, uh, I already mentioned these sticky thingies. I like it. It doesn't disturb me at all, but if you are hard on the stick, eh, it may disturb you. I think it's a subjective personal preference. I also listed the length of the stick as uh, a pro, an advantage, but it can also be a disadvantage. I bought it as a desktop mount. If you use the same surface for your stick and your laptop, if you are using a laptop and you don't have a big PC screen up there, and if you don't use the, one of these, let me show you, these laptop stands with a cooler that kind of raises it, it just lies flat on the surface, then the stick would be like this. It blocks out your view. You cannot see the screen. I mean, that's a lot of ifs, and it's not very likely that all of these conditions are met at the same time, but it is a possibility that's worth considering. So keep that in mind. It's big. And another disadvantage is the software. I was really disappointed. You can download a software called SimApp Pro. Super easy to install. And you need this mainly for the dynamic vibration motor. I used a uh, Microsoft Force Feedback 2 uh, stick for a very long time when I flew Rise of Flight and I loved Force Feedback. I'm also a real life pilot and I just love feeling the airflow and the vibrations and everything uh, through the stick. It adds to the immersion, it makes it so much more realistic. So I was really happy to learn that although it's not a force feedback stick, it has vibration. So it can vibrate when uh, you reach a certain AOA uh, or you fire the guns or lower the gear or touch the ground with the gears. So I was really looking forward to this feature. The way it works is that you select the game, DCS, you select the aircraft. And over here, everything is in the cloud. So over here, whatever profile you create, it uploads it to the cloud. And anyone can download your profile. So you have all these profiles that you can download and use. Select and use, and you run them. Easy, That's I think that's brilliant. You don't have to use file sharing to, to share your profile. You see everything here. It's just one click. Problem is, there was none for the F-14 Tomcat. 
I couldn't download anything. So I created my own and that is a nightmare. Let me show you. Um, now these are a little bit simplified, but let me show you a F16 uh, profile. This is so not user friendly. I can't even begin to tell. You have to manually add and delete these points one by one, uh, add the values. So it's not like you can easily create a curve. You have to calculate the values and then set up different curves for different speeds and you cannot copy paste anything. Although you have all these options like gear in flight, so the drag, uh, gear touch ground, speed brakes, weapon fire, angle of attack at different air speeds. But again, this is in meters per second. Um, how do you figure out what speeds you need, what angle of attacks you need, what's the vibration percentage? I managed, but it took a while. It's really not user friendly. And then I went in game and realized that some of these didn't have any effect. Sometimes the vibration kept going even after the condition was, was not met anymore. Like I raised the landing gear and it was still vibrating. I exited the mission and it was still vibrating. Uh, or fire cannon shell. So it should vibrate for about 0.1% maybe 0 0.2 seconds. And then each time I fired my cannons, it vibrated for three seconds. So it's just weird. It doesn't really work as expected. It's kind of bugged. It keeps vibrating at times uh, when it should have stopped. It's just weird. But I was willing to accept that until, and this is the biggest con ever, I realized that I have at least 10 to 20 FPS less than before. And I was wondering what on earth happened. And then I did some Googling and I realized that it's a common issue. So under your saved games folder, under scripts, it, the WinWing software creates um, a folder called WWT. And this is what's slowing down the game. And that's just terrible. I, I can't take it. It's not acceptable. So what I did was I deleted this folder and voila, the game was running smoothly again. But when I restarted my computer, the folder was there again. So I had to open the task manager and disable the WinWing software from starting uh, when Windows starts. There is a setting option in the Sim App Pro, but somehow it doesn't work, so you have to use the task manager. User-friendly or not, working or not, it doesn't matter because it costs me 10 to 20 FPS, and we're not talking about uh, 100 FPS by default. So when you have 40 and you sacrifice 20, that's a big change. It's just not worth it. So I'm not using this SIM app pro and now it runs smoothly, but on the downside, I don't have any vibration functions. It's a pity. So if you want to buy the wind wing stick for the vibration, that's your main decisive factor. Think again, but vibration aside, if you don't care about that, it's still amazing. Another disadvantage is a little bit of dead zone. So I'm not sure if you can see, but if, if I move the stick this much, only just a little bit, ever so slightly, it does not register in game, even though I have no dead zone set up for any of my curves. Not sure why it is. I tried to calibrate. Maybe there's a way to solve this. If you know a way, let me know in the comments. But as it stands now, it has a tiny bit of dead zone. 
doesn't matter that much, but if you fly Spitfires, you know that sometimes this is all it takes to fly the Spitfire. And with this, you're mostly staying in the dead zone. So you need larger movements. So this is it. This was my honest first impression review after a week of use. The Wind Wing uh, F-16 EX with the Orion base. Overall, it's a massive improvement. I thought it would be an improvement after my Thrustmaster T-16000, but I did not expect it to be such a massive game-changing improvement. And I'm really, really impressed with the quality and everything. And even the ordering process was so easy. It was out of stock, but I placed an order and a few weeks later they told me they have it and everything was so smooth, shipping, customer service, everything. I can highly recommend Winnowing. If my Thrustmaster uh, Warthog throttles ever break, then I will definitely replace it with a one wing throttle. That's how impressed I am. Okay, I hope this was helpful. If you're looking at the stick and considering buying one, I hope this little review was helpful. If you have any questions, remarks, or I said something stupid, or you know something that I don't and that would help me or the others, please let me know in the comments. All right, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See ya.